You may remember from our previous videos that we discussed the possibility of Betelgeuse going supernova in our lifetime. But what would that look like? And what can we learn from other stars that have exploded in the past? Well, in this video, we are going to explore one of the most spectacular examples of a star explosion, or a supernova, that has been observed by humans for centuries, the Crab Nebula. It is a huge cloud of gas and dust that was formed by the death of a massive star about 1,000 years ago, and it is one of the most studied objects in the sky that has a lot to teach us about the life and death of stars, the origin of elements, and the nature of extreme physics. But what makes this nebula even more amazing today is that it has been captured by our new eye in the sky, the James Webb Space Telescope. It has revealed details of the Crab Nebula that were not visible to the Hubble Space Telescope which observes invisible light. In this video, we are going to see what news it can tell us about this fascinating nebula and its pulsar, which is a rapidly spinning neutron star that powers the nebula with its beams of radiation. We are also going to learn how these images can help astronomers study the nebula and its pulsar in more depth and how they can reveal changes in the nebula over time. So buckle up and get ready for an amazing journey into the heart of a supernova remnant. Before we dive into the new images of the Crab Nebula taken by James Webb, let's first understand what this nebula is, how it was formed, and what its main features are. The Crab Nebula is located about 6,500 light years away from Earth in the constellation of Taurus, which means that it takes 6,500 years for its light to reach us. The nebula is about 10 light years across which means that it would take 10 years to travel from one end to the other at the speed of light. That's huge. But how did this nebula come into existence? Well, it all started with a massive star that was about 10 times more massive than our sun. This star lived a short but brilliant life, burning its nuclear fuel at a very high rate. But eventually, it ran out of fuel and collapsed under its own gravity. This triggered a colossal explosion that blew off most of the star's outer layers into space, creating a shock wave that swept up the surrounding material. This explosion was so bright that it was visible to humans on Earth in the year 1054 AD. In fact, it was recorded by ancient astronomers from China, Japan, Korea, and Arabia as a guest star that appeared in the sky for several months. Some Native American tribes also witnessed this event and made rock art depicting it. This explosion was one of only a few supernovae that have been observed by humans in recorded history. But what happened to the core of the star after the explosion? Well, it didn't disappear completely. Instead, it shrank into a very dense object called a neutron star, which is so dense that one teaspoon of its material would weigh billions of tons on Earth. A neutron star is also very hot and magnetic, and it spins very fast. However, the neutron star at the center of the Crab Nebula spins about 30 times per second, which means that it completes one rotation in less than a blink of an eye. It is also very special because it emits beams of radiation from its magnetic poles. These beams sweep across the sky like a lighthouse as the neutron star spins. This makes the neutron star appear to pulse or flicker as we see its beams from different angles. That's why we call it a pulsar. It is not only fascinating to look at, but it also plays a crucial role in powering the Crab Nebula. This pulsar emits not only radiation, but also particles such as electrons and protons at very high speeds. These particles interact with the magnetic field of the pulsar and create jets that shoot out from its poles along its spin axis. These jets are very narrow and extend for several light years beyond the nebula. However, the particles also create a torus, which is a ring-shaped structure that surrounds the pulsar's equator. The torus is very thick and bright, and it emits mostly infrared light. They also fill the space between the torus and the jets, creating a wind that blows outward from the pulsar. This wind collides with the material that was ejected by the supernova explosion, creating shock waves that heat up and ionize the gas and dust. This makes the gas and dust glow in different colors depending on their temperature and composition. The glowing gas and dust form filaments, which are thin and twisted strands that weave through the nebula. 
The filaments are mostly visible in red, green, and blue light, and they have different densities and motions. Now that we have a basic idea of what the Crab Nebula is and how it was formed, let's take a look at the new images of the nebula taken by the James Webb. The Crab Nebula was one of the first targets that the Webb observed. It took images of the Crab Nebula using two of its instruments, the Near Infrared Camera, NIRCAM, and the Mid Infrared Instrument, MIRI. These images were combined to create a false color image that shows the Crab Nebula in infrared light. The infrared image reveals details of the Crab Nebula that were not visible to the Hubble Space Telescope, which observes in visible light. For example, the infrared image shows more details of the filaments, such as their structure, density, and motion. The filaments appear as thin white lines that crisscross the nebula. Some of them are straight, while others are curved or twisted. Some of them are dense, while others are faint or broken. Some of them are moving fast, while others are moving slowly or not at all. These differences reflect the complex dynamics and interactions of the gas and dust in the nebula. The new image also shows more details of the torus and the jets, such as their shape, size, and orientation. The torus appears as a bright orange ring that encircles the pulsar. It is very thick and bright because it emits mostly mid-infrared light, which is produced by warm dust that is heated by the pulsar's wind. The jets appear as two thin blue streaks that extend from the pulsar along its spin axis. They are very narrow and long because they emit mostly near-infrared light, which is produced by fast-moving particles that are accelerated by the pulsar's magnetic field. So, what can we learn from these new images? How can they help astronomers study the nebula and its pulsar in more depth? And how can they reveal changes in the nebula over time? Well, there are many answers to these questions, but here are some examples. One thing we can learn from these images is how the physical conditions and processes in the nebula vary across different regions and wavelengths. For instance, we can measure how hot or cold different parts of the nebula are by comparing their brightness in different bands of infrared light. We can also measure how much dust or gas there is in different parts of the nebula by comparing their opacity or transparency in different bands of infrared light. And we can measure how fast or slow different parts of the nebula are moving by comparing their Doppler shifts or changes in wavelength due to their motion. Another thing we can learn from these images is how the pulsar's properties and behavior affect its surroundings. For example, we can measure how fast or slow the pulsar is spinning by comparing their pulse periods or changes in rotation rate due to their loss of energy. We can also measure how strong or weak the pulsar's magnetic field is by comparing its emission in different bands of infrared light, and also measure how much or little the pulsar's energy output varies by comparing its brightness in different bands of infrared light. But there is more to come. The Hubble Space Telescope, which has been observing the Crab Nebula for decades, will soon take a new image of the nebula in visible light for comparison. This will allow us to see how the nebula looks in both infrared and visible light, and how it has changed since the last time Hubble observed it. This will also allow us to appreciate the beauty and diversity of the Crab Nebula in different colors and wavelengths. The Crab Nebula is one of the most spectacular and fascinating objects in the sky, and it has a lot to teach us about supernova remnants and pulsars. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. See you next time.